Okay, so I am going to go ahead and talk to you about um, week, or introduce you week 14, which um, is the week April the 10th through April the 16th. We'll be studying subjunctive with emotions. After completing this week's assignments, you should be able to express your emotions and feelings with respect to yourself and with respect to others. All of this week's assignments are due by the end of the day, April 13th, 2017, and the, this week's assignments address student learning outcomes one, two, and three, which you can find in your syllabus. So just like in um, all other weeks, you're gonna start by watching your instructor videos. So if you open up here, you've got two videos that go over the subjunctive with feelings and emotions. After you've watched them, go back out here, um, click on the class participation forum. Um, someone's already posted out here, but I'd prefer you guys to click on my thread, hit reply, and then post any questions or concerns you have about the material covered in the videos or any other questions or concerns you have about the class. And once you're done with that, go back out to the site. Um, we also have an oral quiz this week, so you'll visit my language labs, look on the alarm clock, find the oral quiz, and then you'll complete it. Um, just make sure that you turn off your pop-up blockers and that your microphone is set up. It's most important that the pop-up blockers are turned off. I think that's the biggest problem that you guys have. Um, and then you also have assignment 14, where you're doing 10-1, 10-2, 10-4, 10-5, etc in my language lab. So let's go out to my language labs. You can click here and it'll take you out there. I already have mine up. And we would click on the 13th. Okay, and then you just wanna make sure that what's out here, um, oh, I clicked on the wrong week. Okay, so make sure you click on the correct week and you can see 10-1, 1014, 1029, 1030, you just want to double check that what's on the calendar is what matches right here. Okay. Um, then you'll also notice there's a bunch of vocabulary tutorials. Those are not assigned. You can do them, you can look at them if you would like, but you do not have to. There's also a grammar tutorial on the subjunctive that you are welcome to look at as well, but is not required. And then um, another to grammar tutorial and two um, extra practice activities, and so those are not those are not um, required. But it's but it's just extra practice if you feel like you need it. Okay. Also, if you scroll to the bottom here, you will find Oral Quiz Three. So you'll want to open that. You're only going to get one attempt at it, so make sure um, that you're ready to take it before you open it. Um, you're being asked, everyone seems to come to you for advice, read the following situations, then for each one, make a recommendation or a suggestion orally in Spanish. Okay, here they want you to use the subjunctive, okay, so if you're not using the subjunctive, you're not doing it correctly. So what you'll want to do is, you'll want to look back in your... Um, <clears throat> in your text on page 327. This is where you have a bunch of um, verbs and expressions that um, that indicate um, Okay, actually it's better if you go out to page um, 306. If you go back this um, this um, speaking activity or oral activity is from chapter 9 so you'll probably want to look at subjunctive to express influence so you can use things like aconsejar, decir, desear, insistir in, mandar, necesitar and so you would do something like okay, tu compañero de cuarto no tiene dinero para pagar la cuenta de su tarjeta de crédito so you might want to say something like um, Te aconsejo que busques un trabajo. Or, um, necesitas, um, or te recomiendo que pidas dinero de tus papás. O te sugiero que pidas dinero de tus papás. O es importante pedir dinero de tus papás. So remember that you can, um, so remember to go back and look at this and that if you use the K in your, if you use um, a phrase that requires subjunctive and then you put the K in that you have to put the verb into the subjunctive form, um, but that you could also, some of these you could use without, like you could say, es bueno que 
um, busques un trabajo, es importante que busques un trabajo, o es bueno buscar un trabajo. Um, so, sentences... But anyway, so you can, so you want to look back on this page and use these, these phrases that you would use the subjunctive with. And then if you go back, I think just a couple pages, okay, which would start here on page um, 302. So on 302 is where you'll see at, reminded how to form the subjunctive. Um, so just remember that you put the verb into the yo form and then you add the opposite ending. Um, and so that's how you get digo. The yo form is digo, but then it becomes diga, digas, etc. Same thing for algo, oigo, etc. Um, and then they give you a couple of other irregularities. Remember that um, buscar has a hard C sound, but if you put it next to an E, it would have a soft C sound. Um, so the same thing that you did with the preterite for C-A-R, G-A-R, and Z-A-R verbs, you end up having to do for, um, for the subjunctive mood as well. And then they also show you, you know, if it's a stem changer, that's why you want to change it to the present tense, because if it's a stem changer, you should have that stem change in your um, subjunctive form. And then they give you a list of your irregulars on page 303. Okay, so you would have like, um, yo quiero hacer un viaje, so you might say, um, yo te aconsejo, bueno, te aconsejo que busques una agencia de viajes, or um, te recomiendo que busques una agencia de viajes, or, um, Maybe, te aconsejo que ahorres tu dinero. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do here. 